All right, y'all, this is your second and last instructional video of the week. So technically, you're supposed to be watching this on Wednesday. You should have watched a video yesterday, done a five-question five skill check yesterday. Then today is Wednesday, so you're watching this video. That's it for today. Tomorrow, you are going to do the skill check associated with this video, or you could go ahead and get it out of the way. And then Friday is sort of a practice test for the entire unit, because at this point, we will be done with it. So you want to make sure you get everything done for this week. Again, it's not that much. And here we go with today's lesson. Um, right now, I encourage you to write this problem down. Pause this video, write the question down so that we can work it out together. That will help you learn it way better than just watching the video. All right, so this question is very similar to what we were working on yesterday and the day before and the day before. The only difference here is that in the numerator here, we see these parentheses. Well, we remember that when we see 4 to the 3rd power, that's taking this whole piece and raising it to the 4th power. And when we have an exponent being raised to another power, that's called the power to a power rule, and we do something different with our exponents there. We don't add them anymore. We actually multiply them. And again, it's only in this one instance right here that we're going to use multiplication because that's the only place where we have a power being raised to a power. So when I start this problem, the first thing I want to do is evaluate that power to a power. So that makes the numerator 4 to the power of 3 times 4. So that makes that 4 to the power of 12. Then in the de and then um, I'm also going to take my second term here, which is 5 squared. So I'm going to make that 4 to the power of 12 times 5 squared. Then in the denominator, there's nothing I can do to simplify yet, um, so I'm just going to put my 5 underneath my 5, so I'm going to make that 5 to the 10th, and then I still have 4 to the 15th. All right, so now when I go to simplify, you should be pretty good at this by now. Um, I think about where the 4 goes by whether the 12 or the 15 is bigger. 15 is bigger, so 4 stays in the denominator. And 15 minus 12 is 3, so it's 4 to the power of 3. Then I go to deal with my 5. Well, my 5 is, I've got 2 and 10. Well, 10 is bigger than 2, so my 5 is also in the denominator. And then 10 minus 2 is 8. Now remember, when both of your terms are in the denominator, you have to use that placeholder 1 there. So your final answer is 1 over 4 to the 3rd power times 5 to the 8th power. All right, so hopefully that's not too much. Let's move on to the next one. So go ahead and write this question down before we do anything else with it. So again, pause the video, write the question down. All right, so now that you've done that, first thing we're going to do here is we're going to start looking at what we have. Well, here we have 8 squared raised to the power of 5, so we have power of power in the numerator. And we also have power of power in the denominator here. So when I go to start this problem, I'm first going to start by evaluating those power to a powers. So in the numerator, I really have 8 to the power of 2 times 5. So that's 8 to the power of 10 multiplied by 3 to the power of 4. And then in the denominator, I've got 8 squared. Nothing I can do with that. And then I have 3 to the power of 5 raised to the power of 3. So that's 3 to the power of 15 multiplied by 8 to the power of 4 is still there. All right, well now everything here is positive, so we're pretty much ready to go and evaluate in this problem. So I'm going to start with my 8s here. So that's going to be 8. Well, there's nothing I can combine it with, so that's 8 to the power of 10. My 3s, there's also uh, nothing I can combine them with there. So that's going to be times 3 to the power of 4. Uh, in my denominator, 3 to the power of 15 just by itself. And then I'm going to deal with my 8s. So when I combine those, that's going to be 8 squared. Multiplied by 8 to the power of 4. So that's going to be 8 to the power of 4 plus 2. So 8 to the power of 6. And then again, something that's pretty easy to simplify. 
So my eights here, I've got a 10 and a six that's larger in the numerator. So that's eight to the power of 10 minus six. So that's eight to the power of four. Then when I look at my threes here, I've got a four and a 15 that's larger in the denominator. So I've got three there. And then 15 minus four is 11. So now I've got only positive terms and only one base each time, and um, each base only appears once. So our final answer there is eight to the power of four over three to the power of 11. So the last type of question you might see something like this one, which is pretty similar to what we've already done. The only difference here is that we see this negative. So when I go to get started on this problem, I'm going to start uh, by evaluating my power to a power here. And you're going to notice that I show a lot of work. Some of you might be hesitant. Hopefully you're writing this down right now. But the more work you show, the fewer mistakes you're going to make. So here, 2 to the power of 10. Can't really do anything with that. So that's just 2 to the power of 10. Here I'm going to evaluate my power to the power. So that's 6 to the power of three times four, so that's six to the power of 12. Here I've got six to the power of negative five times two to the power of three. Well now, something else should be happening in your minds because you are looking at a type of exponent that you know you're supposed to deal with before you start solving the problem, and that is this negative here. So we're gonna rewrite again. We've still got two to the power of 10, multiplied by six to the power of 12. They're already positive, they're already in the numerator, they stay where they are. But this six to the power of negative five needs to come to the numerator and be six to the power of positive five. Then the two to the power of positive three stays where it is because it's already positive. So now I'm gonna keep simplifying here. Well, two to the power of three, um, actually let's just start with our twos. So when I deal with my twos right there, I've got two to the power of 10, can't do anything with it. So I've got two to the power of 10 in the numerator. In the denominator, all I have is two to the power of three. So I've simplified my twos there. So then let me deal with my six. And that's gonna be combining six to the 12th and six to the fifth. So that's gonna give us times six to the power of 17. So now when I go to finish this problem, I end up having to only simplify one piece. I only have one base six, so I already know where that goes. Um, my base six to the power of 17 stays in the numerator because that's where it already is. Nothing I can do to it. Now I look at my twos, I've got a 10 and a three. Well, my two is also gonna stay in the numerator because my power of 10 is bigger. So I've got two here and it is going to be to the power of 10 minus three, so two to the power of seven. Well here, there's nothing really in the denominator left, so I put a one. And when the one is in the denominator, you don't need it because that's saying two to the seventh times six to the 17th divided by one. Well, when you divide anything by one, what you get is what you started with. So that final answer there is two to the power of seven times six to the power of 17, and that's it. All right, so last question of the day, and this one is the trickiest, so I recommend writing it down. It's not as hard as you're gonna think, you're gonna make it seem harder than it is. Uh, so just go ahead and write this down and then let's get started. So it's been almost like a week and a half since you've seen something that looks exactly like this. So this one here is two over five and both of them are being raised to the power of four. So what you do there is you apply that exponent to both pieces. So this is actually two to the fourth over five to the fourth. And then we're multiplying that by, well, the same rule applies here. You just apply your exponent to both pieces. So that's two to the negative second over five to the negative second. All right, so when we go to keep solving here, um, there's nothing wrong with two to the fourth over five to the fourth. That's absolutely fine. We're gonna keep it two to the fourth over five to the fourth. 
and we're multiplying that now. And some of you are looking and you're like, well, you can't have negatives. So I need to take this two to the negative second and move it to the denominator and make it two to the positive second. And then I need to take this five to the negative second and put it in the numerator and make it five to the positive second. So basically what's happened here is because these each had the same negative exponent here, they have flipped and now they're both the positives. So now let's go and continue to simplify here. Well, two to the fourth times five squared is two to the fourth times five squared. And in the denominator, five to the fourth times two squared is, well, I'm gonna put it in an order that's easier. That's gonna be two squared over five to the fourth. Again, the two squared five, or the two to the fourth, five to the second, two to the fourth, five to the second. This was five to the fourth, two to the second, five to the fourth, two to the second. Well, now when we look at this, we actually have to simplify here because we have a two in the numerator and a two in the denominator. So when we go to think about this, we know that um, the four is bigger than the two. So my two is gonna be in the numerator and four minus two is two. Well, now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna look at my five. Well, my five here is actually bigger in the denominator because it's four. So I'm gonna have five here and four minus two is going to give me two. So I have two squared over five squared. So that might be the final answer. Or we also know that two squared is four over five squared is 25. So again, that's that final piece there. So at this point, you have technically learned everything that you're supposed to know about exponents um, before going into Math 1 next year. So again, there's a six question skill check that you're going to take. It's technically Thursday, tomorrow's work, depending on what day you're watching this. Uh, but you could just take it right now, get it out of the way. The last thing for this week is actually going to be an exponent review um, thing. It's going to be 11 questions. And it's basically the 11 things you're supposed to know about exponents. So I need you to take it. I need you to be honest with me and yourself about what you know. And then over the weekend, I will go over an instructional video of each one of those questions. I'll show you kind of what the class's results were percentage wise. And then uh, basically on Monday's work, uh, our Monday's lesson will be to go over that. We'll have a Zoom class actually to go over that. And then on Tuesday, you will actually take what's going to end up being kind of like an assessment uh, that is just going to assure that you have learned everything you're supposed to know about exponents. If you've been watching these videos, then you're going to be absolutely fine. If you haven't, I recommend you go back and maybe watch them. Uh, but mostly, if you didn't know what you were doing and you scored poorly, I just reset your quiz and hopefully you can get things done. All right. So again, reach out if you need me, but that was it for today. Bye.